Welcome back to another episode of the Vile Files Bachelor Recap Edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by Amanda and Allie. How you ladies doing? Good. Happy Fantastic. Monday. Happy Monday. Woo! Amanda had her birthday on Friday. Also, Elizabeth Wagmeister is with us. Welcome back, Elizabeth. Thank you, Good to Nick. be with you. Good to see you and happy birthday. Thank you. We always love it when you're here. I love being here. I mean... Hello. I'm really to, just part of the show. But oh, thank you. But I have Kiki. Yeah, Kiki, today. Kiki, Kiki, the new office dog. Is part Kiki of the new studio. friendly or is Kiki a slut? That's the question I've been asking myself ever since she's started she's coming to the office. So friendly. Yeah. She's, she's dignified. Because she, she saves like belly rubs. Just because everyone's. Like, yeah, just because she's you're. She's just like sticking her tongue down friendly, people's throats. doesn't mean you're a slut. That's the question every mother has to ask. Is her daughter popular <laughs> or is she. Although. A little promiscuous. Is that, what, is that what the moms are asking? <laughs> That's I w- what I asked myself about Kiki. I met at a birthday, and she had all improv uh, Friday night, and she had a show. Show is it a so- showcase? Like a show? Was, You're part of a show. It was a show. Yeah. We all went. Yeah, yeah. she had a whole row. A it, team was outing. Really, yeah, it was really. Yeah. Like it was like it was like me growing up in Catholic church. We would take yeah, the whole pew. The whole pew. Yeah, yep. that's uh, so fun. It did. It did give Catholic throwbacks because we were waiting on you and Natalie, and like Derek put his jacket down yeah, on your two saving, seats. It saving. was very like Sunday morning. And then we sat down, and like Amanda does a lot of improv. Mm-hmm. Allie, or, hey, so, I did it for months for you. You're welcome. I hope. Well, then that disappoints me. I'm disappointed <laughs> in you because you didn't do it for yourself or your career. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm just a bystander. We'll I am about, not involved. In yeah. <laughs> We'll we'll table this coaching one on one for a little time, and then we sat down and Amanda, like I said, to, I said to Natalie, I'm like, I hope she's good. Like mm-hmm. we were there, mm-hmm. you know. She does a lot of energy and and time into improv, and it was like this could go, you know. It's LA. My God, it's like you know, organized improv. You never really know. Mm-hmm. Like it can be exceptional, and it could, you know, everyone has to start somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so good on everyone so. for trying. But it was really, it was really good. Okay, good. I was like, where is this going? No, Amanda was very good. Her team was very good, and uh, the other team, I, we laughed. It was, it was a good. It was, it was a so fun, cute. It was a fun night out. I was Yay. impressed because well, I saw Ali and Derek like right when I got there, and then like getting off stage and seeing you in the audience, like you and Natalie. I was like, oh, you didn't yeah. know they were like, coming. No. Oh, right. It, it I texted surprise, you. Yeah. Which I think yeah. is good because I think I would have been more. I was part of the surprise and I forgot it was a surprise. <laughs> yeah. But you did really good. It yeah. was really I... I expected you would do fine. Yeah. 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 But you were really good. Thank yeah. you. You exceeded his expectations. Yeah. And I, you were. Yeah. I mean, yeah. In a way. I, I don't want to <laughs> say I don't want to suggest I had no expectations of no, her. But, it, but you just never really know. It's also incredibly difficult yeah. to get up there and kill it yeah next time i'm inviting myself oh my god i want Hell to yeah. come along we Anytime. all brought drinks except for nick they were, but oh. were, is that what it was supposed to i be? literally I asked very thirsty i said yeah. oh, do you want to uber with back. us so you can get a little tipsy and yeah. you said no. i just heard do you want to uber with us <laughs> <laughs> and you said no. and that's where the I conversation no. ended <laughs> did you think i was sipping like water out of my water bottle i was show? i had i was focused on the show thank oh. you to be honest <laughs> The best was um my friend and I made water bottles to go at my apartment and the only water bottle I had left for her was a better help water bottle there that we've been given through the show and Derek goes the irony of like the Putting gin liquor. in the better help water bottle There you go Elizabeth, how are you? Other than congratulations on your engagement. Yeah. Congratulations to you. I mean, I know for this podcast, it might be not the newest it's old news. news. Yeah. It's the fir- it's not old news. Though. It's the first time that I've seen you in person since I texted you the second I saw. But I'm so excited for you and Natalie. Likewise. Well, I'm excited for you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what was your exact proposal date? The 12th, the okay. day before Friday the 13th. Okay. Mm. So we were. Which I thought about doing on Friday the 13th. It could have mm. been fun. Yeah. So we were about a week apart. We're engagement twins. You were before me. After. You were after? After. Oh. December 17th. Yeah, but he was January 12th. Oh, wait, you were January 12th. So okay, then I was before. So then we're before a month me. apart. <laughs> no, you're like two, three. This, this shows that. You're a journalist. Have, it's fine. You're no, not I have, a scientist. It's I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> I never know what day it is. I never know yeah. what month. It's yeah. February now, apparently. LA does, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, congrats. Thank you. We're like, st- I still say a month apart 
is engagement twins. In a landscape where free and fast shipping is the norm, it can be hard for smaller e-commerce businesses to compete. But you can compete with ShipStation. That's right, all you small business owners. It doesn't matter how small. Maybe you're just like knitting little uh, little anim- animal animal outfits from the comfort of your home. You need to ship that out to your customers. Or you're shipping widgets and digits and uh, essential oils or shoes. It doesn't matter. ShipStation is helping uh, e-commerce businesses all across this great nation of ours help their business run by helping them automate their shipping process and giving them the best shipping prices on this planet. You don't have to be a, a Fortune 500 company. You can save on shipping with ShipStation. Get up to 84% off USPS and USPS rates with ShipStation. If you're selling online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Uh, ShipStation integrates effortlessly with all those platforms. Manage every order from one simple dashboard to automate routine shipping tasks, print labels, easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment, and automate delivery notifications. And with enterprise solutions, you can make warehouse optimization easy. ShipStation scales when you do. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation. 90% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. So you know it works. We love it. I've been using ShipStation for uh, ever since uh, Natural Habits uh, well, for years. It's, for, life. It's, for life. For life. For life. For life. Use promo code V-I-A-L-L today at ShipStation.com. Sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com. Promo code V-I-A-L-L. Get a 60-day free trial at ShipStation.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Thanks to ShipStation for sponsoring the show. Rothy's, refresh your 2023 wardrobe with Rothy's for chic, sustainable shoes that bring out your style A-game. Allie is wearing uh, her Rothy's Hold on, I'll grab them for you. Look at my shoes. Ooh Ooh la la. Aren't they so cute? They're cute. They're comfortable. There's no break-in period. I have a nice, wonderful pair of loafers that, uh, yeah. I can wear when I dress up. And can I just say, even having Allie's shoe so close to my face didn't smell <laughs> I was nervous about a doing that. at They're all. Breathable. Both because I'm sure Allie keeps herself clean, Thank but you. most importantly, with Rothy's, you can just throw those bad boys in the washing machine. The second they get a tiny bit of mud or dirt on them, you can keep them looking brand new and also smelling great. It's got everything you need in they a have shoe. all different designs. They have some amazing flats, shoes, sneakers. They got handbags. It's amazing what Rothy's is doing all while making this great plan of ours a little bit more greener and safer by making all these incredible products out of recyclable plastic. It's truly amazing. Rothy's shoes are sustainably made with their signature thread spun from recycled single-use plastic bottles, over 146 million and counting. Rothy's original slip-on sneaker won Best Slip-on Sneaker from Self Magazine in 2022. People Magazine named uh, the point the best flat for their first ever Style Awards in 2021. What more you need to know about Rothy's if you haven't tried out this uh, amazing a uh, company with their amazing flats, uh, you need to do it right now. So go to rothys.com slash V-I-A-L-L, that is R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash V-I-A-L-L to shop today. Get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash V-I-A-L-L, that is rothys.com slash V-I-A-L-L. For stylish and comfortable shoes, shop Rothys. Well, lots to get into. Yeah. I feel like we have a little bit more meat to discuss than last Previous week. weeks, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Anyways, let's uh, let's just roll right into the uh, tea if we have Bachelor it. Bachelor tea. Yeah. Okay. Did you see that there was a little, it was giving me quarantine crew vibes when, you know, Matt James and Tyler Cameron and Hannah Brown were all hanging out and yep, making familiar. content. Yeah. But it was Rachel, Clayton, Michelle, Blake, and Giannina went on a trip. The five of they them. They went on a trip? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Wait, so who was on this trip? Rachel, former Bachelorette Rachel, Clayton, Michelle Young. They took a trip. It wasn't like and they then were Blake just in and LA. Giannina. I thought this was like in LA. This really surprised me. Just seeing Rachel with Clayton. And Clayton was kind of. Yeah. It was interesting. I didn't like. It wasn't surprising to me. There are like phases mm-hmm. and kind of coming off uh, being the lead. Mm-hmm. Both Rachel and Clayton were. Mm-hmm. And it's usually. Well, Clayton's story was a little different because even when he was announced as The Bachelor, it was a lot of who the fuck is this guy? Mm-hmm. Why is this guy? We have all these other, like, uh, the, the Rodneys of the world were passed on f- mm-hmm. for Clayton. Uh, and then the season started, and, you know, more of who the fuck is this guy? Mm-hmm. What the fuck? You know, all, you know, he never really had a, a, a moment per se. But Rachel, 
despite moments of of criticism coming her way throughout her season, she certainly had her moment while filming and leading up to it, and you know, with all the stuff with Clayton, she was she was on her high, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think for every lead, there's this period of like again being treated like you know like a A minus celebrity for a moment. You have <laughs> that's the axis you have. Mm-hmm. A minus is so funny. <laughs> yeah, you, th- at least that's the axis you have for a moment of time of being treated like a certain type of celebrity. And with that axis, I think there's a level of unavailability you you present to the world. Mm-hmm. You know, you're more you know you're more selective with what you say yes to. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then that quickly just fades away. Like. Mm-hmm overnight and then now you you know looking at rachel they have gabby and rachel all all that so it's not shocking to me it's just a matter of like oh it's it now now we're in the phase of rachel and michelle and clayton kind of thinking what do we do now like Mm -hmm. what's next i've had those moments of thinking of like you're just kind of trying things you're just Mm -hmm. you're trying you're just like and you're trying to collaborate with your peers because collab you know people like it and now yeah, it doesn't, it's not that hard to figure out that Rachel's like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, mm-hmm. let's bring Clayton on. Like, this will stir up the pot and, yeah. and, and having fun with it. So it's not too shocking to me. I think mm-hmm. this happens always for everyone. Mm-hmm. It's just, um, I think it happens sooner than expected for some people. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Just given like Rachel and I was her just, feelings on Clayton. Right, right. And I, because I agree with you, The I never take the feelings to heart so much with some of these people because- as you said, a lot of it is strategy and kind of staying in the limelight and whatnot. I was just more surprised that they even still talk. Like, if I had to guess, I would think that after they wrapped filming, like, there was never another work Probably set. Not. But Clayton was with Susie, right? Right. And then he wasn't with Susie. Mm-hmm. Rachel, I guess, was with Tino for a hot second. But I think if you exit a relationship in that world... Once you're out of that relationship, especially because of all the rules, there's probably there you probably haven't had some of those conversations or those closer conversations, you know, like Mm -hmm. that people often want to seek out. Like, I just want to know this and I'm curious about this. And Mm -hmm. it wouldn't shock me if both Rachel and Clayton had those questions for one another. Right. I also I'm not here to defend Clayton. Like, I don't even really care that much because to me that was kind of like it happened and it was done. And. You know, we but, can defend Clayton on the show. No, no, I but like I that. no. So I kind of thought he got a really bad rap. Uh, like he definitely did. You know, and given I don't, the given the intensity of everything that happened, like he didn't kill anyone. Right. No, and I didn't think it. I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't great. But I didn't think it was that bad in the sense of he was actually just being incredibly honest. And I kept saying, like, the biggest mistake he made was just being too honest in the way in which he went about it but i also think by product of the show like you're dating multiple people these things happen it was just the double breakup that telling them all everything at the same time is what bothered me but it was the cavalierness of their feelings and his lack of like thinking about how any of this impacted anyone else but himself Correct. and they were just all along for the ride. It was it was right. inconsiderate and, and it was immature yeah. and it, it it just showed his lack of emotional immaturity. And it felt like a lack of executive functioning because it felt like the What's issue that? was that he was so <laughs> present. What? So like by executive, like I'm saying this from like an ADD standpoint as someone like when you can kind of like zoom out and be able to plan things like kind of put together like complicated tasks and timelines so like sort of not just like kind of handle the thing in the moment but also contextualize that within like a larger scale of like what do I need to do and so and I'm that's I'm sure there's like a learning psychologist who's like furiously typing to correct me on that but like basically my point is just like I think he was too present like I think he was so in it when he was with someone and he was like I love you but in a way where it was like kind of a like a total disservice to everyone involved yeah. because there was no like larger sense of like what is this coming at the expense of where are other people in the world like it's like yeah. an object mm-hmm. permanence kind of thing that's the, that's the real nice way of saying like he was just you know selfish and inconsiderate mm-hmm. yeah and, and and you know again it takes emotional maturity to think how your actions not only impact you and the person in front of you but like the ripple effect you totally. know other people around you and and how those mm-hmm. and how that plays out and to think past that like that's that takes that's consideration you know and so he didn't 
he didn't do that. But yeah, you know, at the end of the day, like we have all been that on certain levels, and he mm-hmm. just he displayed that behavior on camera and this mm-hmm. with these stakes. And to that end, well, I think he's very much guilty of what he did. I I agree with you. Like we've all been there. I don't. Mm-hmm. We don't need to treat him like he's some horrible evil person who right. can't learn from this mistake. And he's more than I think most people in his shoes has taken accountability mm-hmm. and ownership and shown an interest to like have this be uh, an experience that betters him than mm-hmm. others. So I'm, I'm, I've, I've always been team Clayton since the show. Yeah, no, I think I agree with you though. I think he was so in his own head and f- maybe felt like he was doing the right thing. And then he just like word vomited yeah. everything, but he certainly, he certainly got no help from Jesse or the producers. Right. Yeah. I mean, they loved it. And let's be honest, like he's not the first person that did this. I just think he was maybe the first one who <laughs> verbalized it, it in, so such poorly. A, yeah. in such a, I love you the most. Yeah. That's so, one of the best lines yeah. in bachelor history. Yeah. So anyway, like, I don't think he's a bad guy. Yeah. I did at the time. I felt kind of bad for all the hate he was getting sure. um so like it's fine like we've seen worse people come from this show and other reality shows yeah. i'm i was i thought it was it was nice to see rachel and, and clayton mm-hmm. hanging out uh but and, she, i mean she did have to address it because obviously people were like are they to? back not had she to. had to address it but people were automatically assuming, are they back together? Are they dating? Because they were all together for the PGA tour. So I'm guessing they all just like shared a house. They were all there for that event. Um, what, did you find out yeah, where the, they were? The PGA <laughs> tour. The AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Oh. They were in Pebble Beach. Okay. Pebble Beach. And that was not on my bingo happens card. happens at the three <laughs> yeah. Monterey Peninsula's premier golf courses. I can list them for you if you want. Ooh, la, la. No, this is like a fancy event. Yeah. I'm curious how it many is. rooms there were in the Airbnb and how one. they went about <laughs> like dividing who got what room. Because I feel like that's like the number one way to start drama in an otherwise very pleasant friend group of like getting an Airbnb for I mean, the weekend. There's, there's 100% sexual tension between Clayton and Rachel, right? They've hooked up. On per- that's pretty mm-hmm. common knowledge, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes. Right? Yeah. And they both experienced trauma for this experience mm-hmm. on some level, and they they didn't talk, they didn't hang out, and now they are. There is no way there wasn't like fucking sexual tension in that house. What if it was? Mm-hmm. I mean, Blake and Giannina in one bed, Michelle and Rachel were like, "We'll share," and then Clayton was by himself. But like halfway through the night, Rachel Rachel's said, like, <laughs> I, I, "Who knows?" I'm just I, I'm not Wait, suggesting anything also- happened other than. <laughs> There was tension. There also, we're forgetting a key piece of info here. There could also be sexual tension between Clayton and Michelle. Yeah. Remember no. that? No, I agree with you. I don't <laughs> think there was, but they are technically sure, exes. Any, anything's possible. And she's single. Elizabeth. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I would put my money more on Rachel and Clayton. I think Michelle's like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, it's po- anything's they're both possible. exes. I mean, technically. It's, it's, it's a bachelor, like, a little Super. household. Who knows? If this were any world other than a bachelor group like that would be very weird two girls that have dated the same guy how did she address the yes. drama she what was her statement via february 3rd instagram story that it was all in good fun um what do you she, mean they posted tiktoks about yeah it. and she said that you guys have me dead like to the fans who were saying are you dating um and she said healing and forgiveness is a lesson i had trouble learning for a long time but she said that she's not leaving this era quite yet. <laughs> I'm assuming implying this era of being single. She's not leaving it just mm. yet. Okay. Okay. Sure. But cool, Susie Rachel. also. Susie chimed in. Mm-hmm. We love a good oh, Susie chime in. Everyone's yeah. talking about Susie too. And she just posted uh, an Instagram story, just a selfie of her outside. And the caption was walking on the side of the street with sun, not shade. Oh. <laughs> Ironic mm-hmm. because. Tiny bit of shade bit <laughs> on of that shade. side of the street. Yeah. But I actually don't, I don't think Susie gives a shit. No. No, all. Susie's thriving. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think. She's, the, yeah. I feel like, one of the most secure people I've ever met. She comes and, like, across that way. It's so radiant. Like, I just feel like she's someone who seems, like, really sure of herself. And like, I think they liked her and then associated her with Clayton. Mm-hmm. And then I think quickly came around. Here I, we are hating on him again. Well, I feel like I didn't. <laughs> I just like didn't feel like I got a sense of her personality at all on the show. So I think I was kind of like maybe was sort of had her sorted into like kind of like the bachelor yeah. classic boring camp, which is so and unfair it, because we, because she's so interesting and yeah. funny yeah. and like yeah. kooky and has a million things to say and is great. 
but she just got kind of like the like princess beautiful yeah. girl at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The best was when she came on at after after the final rose and Nick we had been promised like the most upset woman, but I'm guessing that changed because they went with two bachelorettes. Yeah. And the best was just her starting out that episode and Nick saying, "Yeah, are you the most pissed woman?" And she was like, "I'm so pissed." <laughs> like that like that's Susie. She was funny. Yeah. yeah. Noom, where shavings make a pile. We talk about that all the time on this great show. And whatever your wellness needs are, your diet plays a significant role in meeting those needs. Maybe you want more energy. Maybe you want to sleep better. Maybe you want to gain weight. Maybe you want to gain muscle mass. Maybe you want to lean on a little bit. You know, whatever those wellness goals are, Noom is helping you get there. It's a psychology-based approach. Noom uses psychology. That's why they say meeting those goals starts with your brain. The program helps you understand the science behind eating choices and why you crave the things that you crave. To date, Noom has helped over 4.6 million people meet their wellness goals. That's right. Everyone's journey is different. So your daily lessons are personalized to you and your goals. Scientific principles like cognitive behavioral therapy help you understand your relationship with food. I always want to maintain what I'm doing as I get older. I also like to eat. I like to enjoy snacks. I like to try different things on. And Noom allows you to find that routine that works for you. So it's not a diet. It's a a lifestyle, right? And you're learning about behaviors and again, like things that you crave. So you can find that balance in your, in your life all while meeting those personal wellness goals that you have. Uh, stay focused on what's important to you with Noom's psychology-based approach. That's right. Sign up for your trial today at Noom.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash V-I-A-L-L to sign up for your trial today. And check out Noom's first ever book, The Noom Mindset, a deep dive in the psychology of behavior change. Available to buy now wherever books are sold. All right, the Super Bowl's upon us, and it's time to let it ride. Let's get wild. Let's have some fun. Let's play some bets, and you can do it with DraftKings, people. DraftKings Sportsbook is letting you make it rain and let the juices flow. This is Super Bowl Sunday. You, too, can get on the action and be one of the people who likes just, you know, letting it ride. I know I am. I'll get that juice flowing. If you want to give a crap about this game, make some prop bets. Who's going to win the coin flip? Who's going to score first? What's the final score going to be? Are they going to beat the point spread? Are they? Gonna, it's it's all it's so much fun. You get you get the feels, the juice is flowing, and you can have fun with all the people you're hanging out with. And if you want to impress your boyfriend, he probably likes sports betting too. It's amazing, it's fun, and DraftKings is helping you do that. Right, customers can get in on the fi- Super Bowl Fifty Seven excitement with DraftKings Happy Hour Boosts. Check out DraftKings Sportsbook app every day between six p.m. and nine p.m. Eastern for daily Happy Hour bets. If you have never been to Super Bowl before, DraftKings is the place to start. It's a ton of fun. You can be res- fiscally responsible all while doing this and let, get, the, get the juices flowing. Well, new customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in bonus bets Ooh, instantly. Bonus bets. We Incentivize. Love- if you've never you bet go. on it before, that's jump just, on in at $5. That's just bonus money right there. Yeah. Download the DraftKings Sportbook app and use code V-I-A-L-L. New customers can bet $5 on Super Bowl 57 and get 2 Hundred in bonus bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code VIALL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. All right, moving on. All righty. Claire Crawley got married. Great. Woo! Boom. Right. Less than four months after getting engaged. So, guys, clock is ticking for both guy? of you. Uh, yeah, to Ryan Dawkins. Okay. Yeah. And is she engaged to someone else too? No. Okay. No, it's, I other think than it's Dale. just been other than Dale. Because she and Ryan kind of kept their romance like under wraps. Okay. I remember when they kind of like launched their relationship online and there were some comments of friends of theirs saying things along the lines of like the secrets being kept or like a year in the making. So they definitely kept it much more private than her other (laughs) relationships. But she posted on February 2nd, Mr. and Mrs. Dawkins. Great. Great. Okay. There we go. I'm happy for her. Yeah. Yeah. She looked gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. She did. Mm Mm-hmm. Quick turnaround, though. Not as quick as Dale. But I guess she's like she's also like, <laughs> right. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Slowing it down. Four months yeah. compared to seventy-two hours. Exactly. Like really. Yeah. She obviously knows what she wants. She's ready. So if you know, you right. know. Yeah. Because she was like the thirty-nine when she was the Bachelorette. So I feel like by now, I'm sure she like has a very strong sense early on. Like yeah. if she fucks with. I just or mean not. more so like the planning. Like oh. not even just the engagement. <laughs> four months from saying I do to getting down the aisle. Like you can't even get a dress in four months. Not everyone. Right. You know, is a servant to the wedding industry. A cog Speaking in the as wedding a machine. Man <laughs> planning a wedding. Yeah. Jesse Palmer explained why The Bachelor isn't concerned with keeping up with Love is Blind. I feel like that's been a topic of conversation. All these new dating shows coming out. A lot of people kind of 
drag Bachelor for being so antiquated and traditional and not doing anything new. And Jesse said the Bachelor was first. I think a big part of the Bachelor is about authenticity and really trying to get back to what the core of the show has always been about and what it's supposed to be about. It's finding love. It's the romance. It's the journey. It's the love story and finding out how that develops. Um, He also mentions that it hasn't necessarily been immune to switching things up, a.k.a. doing two bachelorettes and adding different things, um, saying, quote, I think it's okay for a show to be cyclical sometimes and try different things instead of trying to completely redefine and recreate itself. It's just getting back to what it's supposed to be, which I feel like has been overall the message of this season. Very much Every time we hear from Jesse, it's talking about or Sean Lowe, bringing again. it back yeah. to romance and bringing yeah. it back and bringing it back. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think it's a cl- it's obvious that what 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 the goal of of the Bachelor franchise, whoever you know, the people in charge, is to truly go back to the roots. I mean, Sean Lowe making two appearances already is like apparently the only one capable of giving relationship advice because he's the only one their silly little show worked for. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you know, so it's like. Uh, it's it's fine i mean uh, it is it is it just is what it is I, I i do think it's funny when you see articles out there of people criticizing the show for whether it's uh, a lack of you know innovation or you know keeping up with the times i'm even one of those people i'd like them to introduce some other kind of non-traditional elements uh, or relationships in the pool of people who are dating uh, and that just doesn't happen. And it's clear that instead it's almost kind of an F you or mm-hmm. to the fans. They just, yeah, I mean, I think the franchise is truly like playing to the base and going back to like old school, like they're truly about the love stories and they don't really, and they're going to cast who they want to cast and they're going to focus on who they want to focus and they're not really going to care. And, you know, for all the people who are out there uh, complaining about this is the end of of The Bachelor, that's just not true. And I'm not saying that to defend the franchise. I'm just saying that is, is from what I've heard from multiple people who know what they're talking about, that The Bachelor is still making ABC and Warner Brothers so much money, Mm -hmm. so much more money than any other thing that both Warner Brothers and ABC is making. So like until that changes, they can do whatever the fuck they want and they will and they are. Yeah. So I will back you up on that. <laughs> um, my sources <laughs> say the same. Uh, you know, I remember there was a piece recently that I saw and it was like, this season is the end of The Bachelor. Yeah, and like Vanity Fair Vanity article. Fair. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just not true. It's just not true, yeah. Um, and given that I cover The Bachelor and have for a while, you know, I'll have people ask me and say like, why aren't you writing that? I'm like, because it's not true. Like, as a critic, who I think that was a column, so like they can write that based on opinion. Yeah. But as a reporter who covers it, it's an incredibly successful franchise. Uh, I think it's gone through some growing pains, obviously, in the past few years, like the Chris Harrison departure, all of this. But if you think about it, to go nearly 20 years without a hiccup, and now you have this moment, I do feel like it's now... This is an unpopular opinion. I know we're going to get to the episode, I'm actually really liking this season, and I think it is going to go back on the upswing. But to go to what Jesse said, and I interviewed Jesse before this season, too, and he spoke all about the, you know, this is back to tradition and all that. But so I love Love is Blind. I love all of the Netflix dating shows. I'm a huge fan, um, just as much as I'm a huge fan of Bachelor. And I think in a way, I think Bachelor is smart to stick to what they're doing because they can never do what Netflix is doing right. because of broadcast regulations. So mm-hmm. Netflix, you have, you know, they're cussing and they're like showing everything and it's so fun and it's more messy, but that's their format. And I think if The Bachelor tries to get into that territory, it's just going to seem like a watered down version because they can't do that. So... I think they're smart to stick to what they're doing because it's been working for two decades. But yes, like all the calls to change things. I agree with you, Nick. They have a formula. They're sticking to it. When you look at the bottom line and the dollars and the cents, it's working. And it's like Monday Night Football. Like, I really think if you view it through the lens of like, you don't have to change the rules of football every single week. Like, it's the same ones. Like, the cocktail, like, we have the same playbook. Like, the cocktail party gets canceled. The quarterback gets sacked. Like, whatever Mm -hmm. it is. Like, I think viewing it like that is 
kind of the model that they're really like returning to. I think they have to play the long game with this season because when you invest in the love stories, like there is huge payoff with like hometowns, fantasy suites, yeah, final two, because totally. you have proper love stories that you were invested in. You didn't spend the first half of the season like having one crazy lady or woman mm-hmm. who looks crazy because of her edit, like monopolizing all the time. You have these like deep ingrained, more grounded connections that yeah. like hopefully will result in like some high drama we'll, later on. We'll I see. agree. Well, speaking of Love is Blind, we do have a major announcement on uh, for all you reality TV and Love is Blind fans. Next week, Thursday, on Going Deeper, Raven from Love is Blind is with us to talk about all the SK drama, all the infidelity, all the rumors. She goes through every little detail. It's, this is the only podcast that you can listen to her go through every detail of all the things that went down between her and SK. It's some wild, wild shit. Our jaws were just dropped the whole whole show, so you won't want to miss it. It's next Thursday on Going Deeper. Be sure to check that out. Can't wait for you guys to hear it. I'm excited. I'm excited we got it. While we're at it, don't forget to check out Ask Nick's on Monday. We have an amazing episode that dropped the other day. Uh, with she, someone, someone who was cheated on th- by their uh, ex fiance, wants to date the person they were ex fiance was potentially going to cheat on them with. It was wild stuff. You got to check it out. It's a great story. Don't forget to send your questions at asknick at thevilefiles.com. If you're on TikTok, not only <laughs> will you be getting premium content from Nick Vial, but also Vile Files at Vile Files. We now have our own hand. We are growing up and coming. Be one of the. Be sure to follow us on yeah, there. Be one of the OGs. <laughs> and if you're like, OGs. it has so few followers. Is this legit? It's legit. Yeah, it's verified. And we it's, need it's you new. to be there. It's new. We're, <laughs> we're growing. We're, we're growing. <laughs> Uh, also, don't forget better another episode of Better Date Than Never this Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific on AMP, a live show all about dating do's and don'ts, and we're getting people's stories, and it's a it, we're creating a community for other people out there braving the dating world. Uh, we've been talking about X and double standards, and we were talking about, last, shoot, last week, fascinating conversation about how many men uh, don't like when you're in hookup culture, aren't asking questions along the lines of what do you like? What are you into? Like in the, in the bedroom, so to speak, it's, it turn it seems as though that the only check-in that the men seem to be doing are, did you come? Mm -hmm. Which. I can't believe this is like blowing your mind. I I know. (laughs) I'm like, this is not news. Like we've all know. know, I'm, I'm not in a lot of, rooms with a lot of dudes and other women you know? <laughs> for the first time <laughs> so we are here to tell you that this has been a problem yeah, well we are we were discussing that thoroughly on 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 the last episode of better date than never so if if those t- kind of topics of our interest to you make sure to join us this thursday 9 p.m eastern uh download the amp app it's free uh will you check out our instagram for details on that don't miss it back to some tea um because Little Miss Ma'am that I'm going to talk about has three bullet points. Caitlin Bristow has been chatty recently. She's been making some headlines. First, <laughs> she says that she got ghosted by Chris Harrison after uh, she got the Bachelorette hosting gig. She said that she messaged him 10 times without him responding. And her only intention in doing that was to let him know that he was irreplaceable and she wasn't trying to step on his toes. 10 times? Apparently. So yeah. she says. That's a lot. I've reached out to him a couple times. Uh-huh. I think like two, three or four. Mm-hmm. And there were at different times and it was for various reasons. And he didn't get back to me, but it never felt like a... Blatantly ignoring you. Yeah. It felt mm-hmm. like, you know, he was going through a crisis, whether mm-hmm. of his own doing or not. Mm-hmm. And it really wasn't about getting a response. Right. Yeah. No, the way... But 10. Yeah, the the way that Caitlin said this, I listened to the podcast and covered it, is she was very distraught over it. Like, she called Mm -hmm. Chris her best friend. She said that, yeah, yeah, like, she spoke about him, that they were very close, and said that she reached out to him 10 times. He wasn't answering. She thought that he hated her. But then, and I have not listened to it yet, so... I can't really form an opinion, but now she's on Chris Harrison's mm-hmm. podcast. So now this feels a little empty to me, right? Like you talk all about, not that, I mean, I think, I think, yes, I think that people should talk and should make up and there is, you know, room for redemption, of course, but it's like you do a podcast, you get all these headlines and then, mm-hmm. oh, guess whose podcast I'm going to go on. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. I thought the same thing. It seems a little. Whatever. Am I yeah. the one who's. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I kind of I see where Caitlin's coming from in terms of like I would be so anxious if I was like this is someone who I feel close to it's inherently awkward that I have your job after you exited in a way that was like not necessarily something you wanted for yourself like I totally see where she's coming from of kind of like needing that like wait hello like hi like just really trying to make sure like we're cool trying to make sure we're cool and to like be like iced out like that like i would also be kind of oh, like no. frantic but then you I go on a podcast right. and talk about it yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. and then that now really the chris point. is willing to respond to you and like have you on a show like but to, both exactly. of them it's like it's too public yeah because i totally agree with you with caitlin i was like that sucks like why aren't yeah. you getting a response but then 48 hours later they're like and look now we're on another podcast it just mm, uh, yeah it's like very eh, pr like uh yeah. yeah, and the episode is called Unghosted. I just, I can't. I'm. Here's what I'll say. Not to give you a compliment, but I will give you a compliment, Nick. I think, you know, after your time on The Bachelor, not any secret, you had a lot of fans, you had a lot of not fans. And I think what you've done really well is you've gone out and done your own thing. And yet we're talking about Bachelor today. So, of course, you talk about Bachelor, but your podcast is about relationships. You have therapists on. Like you've formed this really great podcast with your team here. And so far, granted it's new. What we've seen from Chris's podcast is it's just let's talk about The Bachelor. And I just wonder, is that the whole podcast? Is he just going to continuously try to capitalize off of the show that he left? Or is it that He's going to do something else. You know, I just wonder, does the well run dry at a certain point? I talked about when I first started the show, I talked about certainly The Bachelor at times. We didn't recap The Bachelor when I first started the show. We would sprinkle it in here and there mm -hmm. when it made sense because it, that was an act of choice to try to build something outside of it. But certainly, you know, I, I knew where I came from, so to speak. So you mm -hmm. try to find that balance. Yeah, I mean, he, he's going hard to the paint, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Wells and Ben, uh, Caitlin. You know, I think those are some of his early guests, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. I, don't know. I, I wish him nothing but the best in his podcast endeavors. Yeah, so it's certainly making a lot of headlines. So it's, uh, it's yeah, sure, yeah. I'm trying to be positive here, yeah. and you're like, sure, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, the headlines. I you know, we like getting headlines. It's nice to get no, but that's what I mean. But like, it's like at the, you try to it. find the headlines that have. I find like the headlines. Like I, we often, I, I don't love, I hate, I hate getting caught up in, in these types of headlines. Mm -hmm. Loathe. Like and the I've, he said, she said. Yeah. And like, certainly we've, I've, I've been caught up in them even when I know I'm participating it, you know, and there's like an, a, like a discussion I'm always having with myself or my peers or my team. Like, who gives a shit? Like, I just, let's just move on. Mm -hmm. And like, sometimes I, I, I've given a shit. Other times I haven't, you know, we have this show and this show is what it is. And I think um, I am grateful for the overwhelming success of this show and the size of the show and the spotlight and target that this show has. And I look at it that way. I can confirm you really don't give a shit because there's some times that I see Nick in the headlines and I'll just text him like as a friend and be like, oh, this is hmm. And he like gives it a thumbs up, like <laughs> just like I don't need to engage in this. And yeah, I, I'm I not get perfect, it. that's for sure. I've definitely participated in stuff, but it's like I think I, I feel like I res I respond far less than I, I I choose not to respond far less than I do, mm -hmm. especially given all the things I know. And sometimes when I hear stories, it's just like where's this where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. Like what is what is this? Mm -hmm. What, what, in what world is this like, th is this coming out now? And in what context? And like, what is this? Is this, this seems made up. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it seems like there's truth to it, but also like your version of what it seems feels, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, what? I don't know. That's how I feel sometimes with some of these stories. But here we go. Here we are. I don't know. It's fine. It's, yeah. Everything's fine. And it, what else we got? She brought you up. Um, should, yeah. she Speaking said, of, she said yeah. that producers sexualized you on her season. Uh -huh. Um, and she said there was one producer. Uh, after I would kiss him, she would come in and wipe my lips and lick her lips and be like, "Oh, I just want to know what it tastes like to make out with Nick." 
They really put him on a pedestal to me. That was part of their tactic. I was brainwashed. Uh I'm sorry. Did you not have a relationship before the show, which is the reason that you went on her show? She didn't meet you in this incubator to like brainwashed into liking you. She liked you before. Was she suggesting that because someone asked her, uh, I guess, what my breath smells like? Or how I tasted that from that she moment forward. She had no forward, opinions she herself. Had, she was incapable yeah. of decision making. Also, that was just so gross. Mm-hmm. Like that description. I was like, mm, we yeah. could I'm sure lived. it probably had, I'm sure it was true. Oh, a hundred percent. That's why I'm like, oh God, that's but like, really what you, gross. Like, what do you. S- but like, no offense, because of that, you guys you know. had no, no know, other like, connection. Yeah, it was a bit graphic, but like, what, what, like, that's brainwashing? Almost like, doesn't the show it's sexualize community. everyone? Isn't that kind of the point? Like all sure. those like yeah. group dates where they're like running around in like salad dressing and shirtless. It's like it feels like I don't know. Yeah, I guess I guess she was incapable. It, it of... is it is interesting though to hear kind of the behind the scenes because when you're talking about the sexualizing, you're saying what we see on camera. But like, could you imagine? Nick probably could. He was on the show, but like a producer coming up to you and like licking their lips, like that's gross. No, it is gross. gross. But, but like, I don't think that's like, the only reason like they I, had a connection. I, I can picture who it was. I know yeah. who it was if it's true. And like I, I can tell you, this person wasn't right. Like it was probably a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like well, there's a little tiny bit more. Um, Caitlin on why <laughs> she really didn't enjoys it. Yeah. <laughs> why she didn't text Nick. Nick, congratulations on his engagement. Um, apparently she did not text you. Congrats. Once, uh, the news was announced and she said, he does this whole thing about not texting your ex. So I was like, is this me crossing a line? So I mean, that's apparently she, the reason she didn't reach that out. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, she said that you would only invite her to his wedding for the headlines, but that she would go if she and Jason scored an invite. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would do it for the headlines. Apparently, yeah. She's despite still, her being on a yeah, well, media I guess she's tour, she's still a little bit brainwashed, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The producer actually asked her to say that. <laughs> so Nick, the journalist in me, I have to ask a question: uh-huh. Are you inviting her to your wedding? No. Okay. And nor and nor would I be invited. Like, we're not. Well, I feel like you said like you want to keep it like. Also, she's not my ex. Oh. You you do. He said this before though. He doesn't view bachelor things like that is like exes whatever i think the whole thing is kind of dumb i also think it's interesting for her to be talking like so like the show brainwashed me the producer did this da 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 da. and i was like you were the bachelorette you went on to host then the bachelorette and when she came on our show she said that she very much wanted to continue hosting the bachelorette specifically the season with two of them she wanted to keep working with them but then jesse got all of them she said she was really hurt by that and now it's like well, the show did this, the producers did this and whatever. And I'm like, I doubt she would be saying this stuff if she was still working for them. Yeah, it does come off like a tiny bit scorned, which I think is like very human, like to just kind of be like, oh, you don't want me? Well, fuck you. Like, you know, like I think that's like a very like human reaction to have. But it does. I think for someone who like started out on the show as like such like a positive, kooky, funny like person, it's this direction just like feels like kind of a departure from like the way that I feel like I was introduced to her and like the vibe I got from her, like yeah. based on like the content that she creates, like that feels like it's really coming from the heart. Like yeah. this just kind of feels like, like Girl, why are why? we unearthing random stuff? Here's what else seems to be a lot lately. though. I don't know. Yeah. There, so this is what I was going to say. And I think largely maybe because of Chris's podcast, I think there's a lot of former bachelor news making its way into headlines and so I really like Caitlin. I don't know her personally at all. Like I've always really, sure. I've interviewed her one or two times. I've always really liked her. I actually, um, I liked a lot of what she said on this recent podcast, but like, it's kind of hard to point a finger at any which person. Cause let's be honest, you included Nick. Love you. But let's be honest, you guys all use The Bachelor for your own yeah. benefit. So and like, you know that. And you say that all the time. Kind of my, like, I don't so, understand about all this stuff. It's yeah. just like, I... And by the way, you'd be I, foolish not to, I right? I don't like defend the show. I mean, they have, it's just like, it's, it's the cherry picking that mm-hmm. some of my peers seem to do when it's beneficial to them to, you know, criticize certain things. Mm-hmm. When I tell you who felt really manipulated and brainwashed on Caitlin's season, this guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Who has two thumbs and felt brainwashed. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't just from producers. And, and also, as I've pointed out several times, uh, I'm internally grateful for how things played out. And while angry and brainwashed and manipulated in the moment, 
uh, I have said thank you to people, including Caitlin, about how things played out, whether they were deserving of that thank you or not, or whether they had my best intentions in the moment or not. I'm still grateful of all of it. And so I just try to look at it from that level and that lens from like mm -hmm. 30,000 feet rather than today I'm going to play the victim because it serves me well. And tomorrow I'm going to pretend when it's affecting someone else that it's 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 a TV show. And mm -hmm. it's always easy right. to villainize the edit. Like it's kind of this built in scapegoat of the medium of like, yeah, this is like, quote unquote, a reality TV show. But we all know how heavily curated like the storylines we get are. And so because of that, like built in element of it, you can kind of cherry pick when you want to sort of say, well, you have no idea what goes on behind the scenes. And these are the things that were actually happening mm -hmm. and sort of suit whatever narrative at the moment you're feeling the most and people can't really fact check you in the same way and the people who can like don't want to because it was 10 years ago mm -hmm. totally and look most alums from this show do that and you're absolutely right if they called her tomorrow and said we want you to host she would be signing that contract immediately so it's and that goes to everyone i'm mm -hmm. not saying that's a bad thing like this is what this show does is you sure. talk about it yeah. to get headlines and to stay relevant and it, by the way, kind of going back to our conversation before of like the bachelor is dead. Isn't this proof that it's not like people are obsessed with hearing about it and talking totally. about people it are invested and they're yeah. invested. And that's what all the alums and bachelor nation know. So talk about it. Talk shit on it. Praise it when it works for you. It's all this like vicious cycle. That's just part of it. And everyone knows it. Like, I don't think Caitlin yeah. would be offended to hear that we're saying like, Oh, you're talking about it because it puts you in the headlines, but you'd also sign a contract to host. Like, mm -hmm. that makes sense. That's what you should do. You came off of a reality show. I will say there are definitely moments where I, like, uh, like when I heard about this headline, mm -hmm. I was reminded of a particular story mm -hmm. that happened. Good two year, year and a half after uh, uh, Caitlin's season uh, that involved. Caitlin and me. Are you gonna no tell us? No. But it was Are you sure? I, yeah. <laughs> I was reminded like of that story and I remember thinking that would have been fun to tell. No. I There's can't. a microphone in front of you. It's just not it's just not <laughs> worth it. And just yeah. and that's you know, that's the thing. It's just uh I don't ultimately I don't think it's all that big of a deal, mm -hmm. but I think it would be made into a huge deal. Got it. In a sense. And I just, I don't want to create that headache. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, there are things that I get brought, I, I, I get, I'm, I'm reminded of that it's just like, you know, I, get, ah, you know, like, I, see, this is <laughs> so also, much I don't tell. <laughs> you know, it's frustrating. So. I mean, I think, but it would completely invalidate her what? whole point. Sure, it would. Yeah. Yeah. Nick. It's not, I know, it's not worth it, but it would, it. it would just completely point to the fact that that's not true wait do you know the story they know the story. yeah <gasps> keep it I'll on tell you later. I'll okay. Tell you <laughs> but again i think what this kind of proves is to us like who are not involved in the show like i view this as both a fan but also a, a media person who's kind of saying like yeah like they're reality stars we're going to use this to their benefit and get headlines and blah 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 but we do forget like this was your life and you are embroiled in this and there's things that you guys know that we don't. But yeah, on some level, it was like, it's an interesting take you have about something that like I experienced literal trauma <laughs> during, mm -hmm. but like, cool. Right. You know, there is a, there, there's that mm -hmm. thought for sure. You but know. that's like, we forget like it's literally your life. Like, yeah. yes, there's cameras, but like it's your life. And that's what yeah. I think sometimes when we just talk about the show, we forget like, there are real people involved and real feelings involved. But at the end of the day, I get to be here with y'all and I get to do this for, for a living. And, and the, uh, the downside of all that is some of this little silliness. But mm -hmm. it, it does uh, great content. There is that. What else we got? Just some solemn news to kind of wrap up our Bachelor headlines. Um, Sarah Heron shared the awful news that her baby mm. passed away after she gave birth at 24 weeks. Um, she said that her son, Oliver Brown, uh, was born on January 28th when she was 24 weeks pregnant and passed away in his dad's arms shortly after. That's, that's so heartbreaking. I mean, yeah, goes without, you know, being said, it's so heartbreaking and so sad, but I will say, I'm glad that she shared this, not mm -hmm. just for herself to, you know, to be open, but 
this is going to help so many people because there's so many issues with pregnancy and child loss and you know and miscarriages. I'm miscarriage yeah. yeah I mean I'm it we're all around this age like all my friends are getting pregnant and getting engaged and all that and you just you unless people talk about it you don't realize how common this mm-hmm. is um maybe not this exact situation which is very severe and just horrible but I really applaud her for sharing this because I think it does help so many people who are going through totally. miscarriages and child loss. Agreed. All right. Well, should we get into the episode? Let's, do Let's it. go. Uh, so you like this season so far? I'm. I don't. I. I'm. I'm okay with it. Yeah. You like it? I like it. Um, I thought the first episode was really boring, and I think it's just gotten better since. And I thought this week's episode was really good like i really liked it there was yeah there was much it felt like there was more to talk about for sure because like last week it just was like where is this going Mm -hmm. i don't really know what are your thoughts on zach so i totally get the narrative of like the boring bachelor like he is kind of boring but i think he's a really good guy he's incredibly earnest and i like how he's handling all of this though like i feel like things come up and he's just very matter of fact and like he's not wasting people's time he has no problem being like yep like this isn't gonna work you can go home where i think in the past people think i know it's not gonna work but it's a reality show so you can stay so there's a lot that i'm impressed by him also like i get it like he is kind of boring but i think also to your point i think they're investing in hopefully finding a love story and i think which is gonna be nice because i feel like that was our biggest issue with Gabby yeah, and Rachel's yeah, there, season, there are no love stories. which mm-hmm. it was just hard because time was split. There were so many guys. There was two girls. And I felt like a lot of the criticism I, I was experiencing and heard from other people is by the time we reached the end of the season, they had their top three. We were kind of like, what do you like Who about are, each other? Who totally. are you? Where's the yeah, connection? Well, I, yeah. I think we, we, will, we won't deal with that same frustration for sure. Zach, <laughs> I was watching this episode and I can't like, Zach sometimes feels like he, he seems like a really sweet, honest, earnest, mm-hmm. wonderful guy. I'm yeah. sure it's, he's all wonderful. But like <laughs> at times he's like when he's when like I call it uh, swag Zach uh-huh. when swag Zach shows up, you know, it's it's a little. Wait, what's swag Zach? Well, when Zach tries to have some swag. OK. You know, when he's all like. In his leather jacket at the yeah, back. When, he, yeah. when he's like, when, when you can tell he's just like, I'm the bachelor, you know? Like, well, I'm, I'm. Like, letting I'm himself feel Zach. himself a yeah, little bit. Yeah, he's feeling himself. It just. The reason I ask what is that is that I'm like, I don't really see him having much swag. No, so no like, I know. Yeah. Like, but, and when he does, he comes across, Swag Zach comes across as like the, the 80s high school movie, and he was. <laughs> Swag Zach comes across as the too good to be true guy who like who who presented really well to uh, the girlfriend's father and uh-huh. did all the right things and he you know Is he like captain of the football team yeah yeah, yeah. Totally. And, totally. And, but like he has the dark side and I don't think Zach has a dark side but Swag Zach comes across <laughs> as the as like the uh, hot guy with a secret like the jerk Ooh. boyfriend in the 80s rom-coms when the nerd would finally be the hero mm. and zach mm. is like the mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. swag zach and then <laughs> and then and then the most uh, well, like when when zach's having fun zach looks like he's like it's like he's prince charming in a bad kids cartoon <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's actually very good. That's very good. <laughs> like I don't know how else to describe it. It's like a real cheesy, like yeah. Cartoon Network <laughs> kids show, and and Zach's the prince because he has a very kind of bone structure of like very traditionally mm-hmm. handsome. Uh-huh. He's handsome. He's a handsome guy, you know. And it's in a very v- old school, <laughs> basic mm-hmm. way. <laughs> And I just, I only see these two Zacks now, yeah. which is like cheesy <laughs> Prince Charming in a cartoon, like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> now and, I can't unsee that. And Swag Zach. And Swag Zach, which is like, I don't know, you seem like some shady, you're up to some sh- shady uh-huh. shit. I don't know. But I don't, he, he uses his head a lot. He's always. He, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 I want him to be my financial advisor. <laughs> I really feel what like. What does he do for work? Do we know? He's Swag Zach. He seems like he would be. He, does he have a job? 
Not currently. No, but she like, was a sales executive okay. at Oracle. Senior, oh, yeah. senior cloud technology sales executive. Like great job. It's, yeah, like literally I, the job I had, just for Salesforce. Totally. Like I feel like he seems like a very, and we can get he into does, this. He, he, I mean, he, he yeah. Wow, this that's all tracks. Yeah. Yeah, because like I think, and we'll get into this throughout the episode, but like he really he says no bullshit and he means it. Like mm-hmm. he's not just like saying that because he thinks it sounds cool. I think he very earnestly is like, I I have to maintain a level of like cleanliness in the show so that way I can meet people like no, he's, uh, he's, he's like a clean yeah. game he's yeah. blowing he's very, the whistle early as a ref he's very intense about all of his decision making oh yeah he's very thoughtful mm-hmm. yeah and, and definitive and yeah. like I'll say like like you know he has the purity of a Ben Higgins almost it seems like but like I think Ben you know and Ben would acknowledge this cares a lot about what people think we all do to mm-hmm. a certain degree um and I feel like Zach is making decisions truly based on what he thinks is right or wrong mm-hmm. and less about necessarily what people think. Or yeah. I just think Ben was maybe more self-aware about perception than, than maybe Zach was. Yeah, I agree Does with that. Does that seem fair? Totally. I think you're right. He's just making his decisions and not thinking about making decisions for a show. Yeah. And what I keep saying to people, because a lot of my friends are like, he's so boring, blah, blah, blah. This is what I've been saying. He's a really, really nice guy and someone who in real life you might want to date, but he's not a reality star. That, that's the thing, too. You know, no. we're nowadays we're talking about, you know, better date than never. We're talking about dating. We're hearing all these horror stories from people dating, specifically women, about all these terrible men and these men who do x y and z and even on this date with uh kelly Kelly, katie katie Mm -hmm. you know she's just asking for the bare minimum and you know i don't know how people are going to respond to zach in this episode but yeah like so far what zach hasn't done uh he hasn't like he hasn't given you a reason like not to think he is boyfriend or husband material right you know, yeah. like yeah. he might not be your cup of tea. Mm-hmm. You know, he you might not have a sexual fantasy about the guy. I, he he might not. Uh, you might not get the 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 spark, and he might not make you feel unsafe, and he might not like, you know, confuse you in a way where you say things like, "I just don't know what it is about him," but I just like want to like, oh, I'm just so obsessed. Like mm-hmm. he might not make you feel that, but like. Maybe this is the type of shit that like you we we need mm-hmm. and and partners and and despite you know and so maybe 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 Bachelor ABC is putting uh, the audience's money where their mouth is so to speak and saying mm-hmm. we found the most boring safest high mm-hmm. character uh, m- emotionally mature twenty six year old that we mm-hmm. could find yeah and yeah. unlike Clayton who couldn't like you know think of anyone's feelings but himself and didn't seem to like either whether it was like processing speed Mm -hmm. for clayton you know it's just like i don't know i just it's going to take me four days to think about your needs so like i know i'm just focused on mine Mm -hmm. and maybe it was just like a a a a, you know mental capacity element (laughs) but like zach has shown us time he he showed us with rachel his ability to like listen to what she said and respond to her and be like, that doesn't make sense. Like, you know, like, and, but, but also calmly talk to her and, you know, stand his ground. And then with these women, he's, again, he's engaged in these conversations and he's getting to know them. And like, it's not done necessarily in the most charismatic way Mm -hmm. and it's goofy and it, but it's, isn't that what it's is for the ladies listening. That's what you're saying. Y'all want. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Like, he's doing everything right. He's not leading anyone on. He, very decisive, as you said. I don't know who said that, but someone said that. Very decisive. Like, thinks about his decision and just makes it. Doesn't keep him around. So, yeah. Like, in a way, that could be boring because he's not being overly dramatic. And he's not being an asshole. And he's just being direct. But I do think this is kind of the grounding season for The Bachelor. where they read what's going on. Like they see what fans are saying and they know that the last few seasons have not been the best. Like it's like, been a rocky or road. Like no one's liked their bachelor right. literally since me. And I was polarizing, 
you know? But like, I get that all the time where people- People liked Matt James, right? Not as The Bachelor, no. They liked his, the people who were yeah. fans of, of Tyler, and there was a lot of those fans who followed the crew, and, and if you, you know, and Matt James had a couple hundred thousand followers at the time, you know, because of his buddy Tyler, Sure, like those people got excited and obviously being the first Black Bachelor, that was a monumental and wonderful like, you know, step in the right direction for the franchise after like years of, of not doing that. But all that aside, when his season started airing, yeah, no, people- I think you're right. People liked him, but maybe not as The Bachelor. Yeah. People it, it, loved it just, him. I remember but, like the first right, night, yeah. the first episode of Matt's season, I was so excited. It was excited. all downhill. And then I was like, oh no. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, he's never been in love. It okay. was all, yeah. But Wait. even like, you know, it's like my my season, like I've talked about like the the bouncy castle with Corinne. Like that was a moment where I was like, all right, I'll fucking do this. I'll take one for the team. Where credit to Zach, he's like either they're not insisting he do shit like this or he's stand, like he's, you know, and at the time I'm thinking, all right, whatever, TV. Um, I'll take it on the chin here. And I think there at times has been this kind of juggling act and balancing act between producers of we have to come up with good TV. We have to have some of these moments. We have to have like peaks and valleys and arcs and things like that, even to the detriment of their bachelor or mm -hmm. bachelorette to put them in these, you know, the, the bouncy castle. Like I very much was setting myself up to look to the guy who only is keeping Corinne around because I was set, you know, physically attracted to her and in reality like she's a beautiful woman like she wasn't even like on my radar mm -hmm. as a potential like person to right wife match like, hang out with oh okay not even match you're like <laughs> you know, take a step back <laughs> just a wonderful I said person wife, but so like, i really gotta back <laughs> up um, <laughs> and and zach is not either being he's not being put in these positions or he is resisting mm -hmm. those positions that he's being asked to put yeah. in so since you said that no one's like the bachelor since yourself i had to refresh. And this is actually, you know, we forget when things happen. So after you was Ari, then Colton. Mm -hmm. Colton, Colton as The Bachelor, fairly jump. was fairly, like, was was popular. And then he became a stalker. Yes. I did his cover story at Variety, so I will move on from that. Okay, then we had Peter. <laughs> that didn't go well. Peter gave us such, I saw a TikTok recently and they were rewatching Hannah Brown's season. It's like, oh, I miss this Peter. Like the Peter had that had so much promise. And then he went on to his yeah. season and right. ended up with three different women and it was just chaos. But okay. Peter on Hannah Brown's season. But uh, yeah. 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 And then we that had Matt point. and then we had Clayton and now we're here. So yeah. But yeah, <laughs> point proven. <laughs> but um, no, I think uh, as much as a lot of the fans are like, this is boring. I actually think that in hindsight, it's going to work because there hasn't been a huge investment in past seasons, both Bachelor and Bachelorette, meaning it's just been about the drama and these storylines, but no love story to hang on to. So when the season ends, you're kind of like, eh. So I think that if this season works, it could be a grounding season to kind of bring it back to where it was. Yeah, we will. We'll yeah, see. We'll see. We'll see if, if it's it really comes down to like what we're saying. Do does the audience latch on to what we are assuming is going to be some love stories, mm -hmm. you know, and I guess certainly some drama, but like by the end of the season, come hometowns, we'll be invested in the relationships, the relationships themselves. and, and that will be, um, the big, big story. And there's, yeah. they're very much setting it up. Like they, they very much want Zach to be the new figurehead of, it's like, they're setting it up for Zach to get engaged. And and them trying to as much as they can, uh, per, like have this whatever new relationship be uh, a, a figurehead relationship, yeah, like a, Sean a, Lowe two point Sure, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the fact that they're bringing him back all, all as much as they are is hysterical. wait. Can I tell you? So when I started this episode, <laughs> I was watching with Michael, my fiance, yeah. who, by the way, until we met, had never seen an episode of anything on The Bachelor. His first season that he watched was Clayton. So we start watching the episode and Michael says to me, he's like, I think this is the wrong episode. This is episode one. He's like, we already watched this. And I was like, oh my God, you're right. Sean Lowe's back. And then I clicked and it was like episode three. And I was very confused for a moment because they never do that. Yeah. And they could have done that and not aired it. And the fact that they did it and right. aired it. Mm -hmm. Like that to me, that tells me that like, yeah, this, they're really... 
drilling that home. I mean, I honestly, I, I expect them to bring Sean and Catherine back multiple times. Mm-hmm. Even at uh, they'll be at I, I they will be at AFR. Mm-hmm. Like if this all goes the way I think it could go, they're really it's gonna be. You know. So my question for the group is, of the women so far, who do you think gives off the most, like, Catherine vibes? Oh. I mean, Catherine vibes? I don't know. I feel like I mean, I don't, I, you He know, needs I don't, a little... I mean, honestly, I think Katie, after that one-on-one mm-hmm. date, she... she he really, likes Ariel, though. She really came out of nowhere. Yeah. Well, that's hysterical. That whole... No, but just like... Why is it hysterical? Well, because... Because... What was it? It was... Was it Bailey? Bailey yeah. burned out fast. That Fine, but so yeah, sad. but right before he talked, was it, was it right before he talked to Ariel? He was talking to Bailey. Yes. And Bailey, I love that conversation. That conversation went like something like this. Uh, they were talking about not being on the same page, and then Zach's like, "Well, like, how do you feel?" And Bailey goes, "I feel good. It's just that I feel this is super weird." <laughs> good but weird. And then you know what I loved is after like her that, default was be like, "No, I feel good." But weird. <laughs> but but it feels super weird. But it's good. And and then because I don't know if it was Bailey, but it was just like it was the juxtaposition of who, I think it was Bailey, but he was talking to someone who wanted more from Zach. I wanted yeah, I wanted validation. Like here is a woman who and maybe Zach obviously wasn't feeling Bailey for whatever reason, but she's saying to, she sits down to Zach, and I guess here, here I'm criticizing Zach a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's for fun, but mm-hmm. like. She's like, I need, I need, I want to, you know, I want validation. Let's talk. Let's, mm. let's have a conversation and all. He's just like, yeah, you know, like he goes, whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's the hardest thing is those were Zach, that's Zach responding and you know, whatever. He just wasn't into it. Yeah. And then, and then Ariel sits down and right as Zach has said, I don't want to lie. I do feel like things have changed. And that's the moment that Ariel comes and interrupts yeah. them. Yeah. And then she sits down and Zach goes, you're just so much fun. And they just start <laughs> making, start making out. out. I know. So. And it just like is set, it just sets him up as that, that scene set him up as I don't really care about the conversations. I don't want to get to know you. I want a simple, fun, like, woman who doesn't want he to wants those pool challenge me sessions. or have conversations just be simple and agreeable and fun and tell jokes and let's make out now i'm not saying that's ariel or that zach but that's how that all kind of came across in that moment think something had to have been edited out of course like that's why but they I'm, edited it that way is kind of yeah. what i'm saying you know right. they edited it where it was like let's you're so much fun make, make out because right, yeah. if there was no editing it was literally like five words and then just full going But then there was so another like, moment with Ariel where where he just kind of gave, had his little mo- it's like I like Ariel. She's yeah. just Yeah. Well they had their whole make going. out in the pool. Like he did, and how he described his what he likes about Ariel. Just, he didn't say anything about her other than that she was basically like simple and fun. But here's the thing. Sometimes you don't know what it is about a person, right? that you really like it's just as a match or it's not so with and i'm kind of being devil's advocate here i was shocked that bailey it kind of didn't work and he's just like okay you can go home that to me i don't know if we've ever seen that like such a quick decision but i think again what you were saying before nick is sometimes you keep people around just to kind of keep them around and i don't know if the producers aren't pressuring him or if he's taking a stand but he's just kind of like eh I'm not feeling it. That's fine. You can yeah. go. Oh, and if I, I am, I'm sure stay. With, with Ariel, it's just like, yeah, I mean, being the, like, it's so much work to be the bachelor and maybe in, in this bubble, in this world, maybe she is easy to be around and fun and fun to make out with. And he is like on all these like conversations where he's talking to a bunch of women that deep down, he's just like, I don't like you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I can't say that. So. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> yeah, let me active listen to yeah. you. <laughs> and there, there is a lot of that. So maybe Ariel sits down and maybe maybe they, you know, we haven't seen any emotional connection yet, but mm-hmm. like there is a vibe and she's just like, hey man, I don't, I, don't, I got no questions, but like, <laughs> what's up? You what's know? up? And, and, and Zach's like, oh, I don't have any questions either. You, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. And maybe, sure. Yeah. It's just, it's, it was not edited. Yes. 
Prozac in that moment. And, and I laughed. I mean, maybe that's where they're getting their drama. Uh, no, I laughed too because the editing just makes it seem like, wait, 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 what just happened? Did I miss something? They're making out in both scenes, by the way, with them. Like then she got in the pool and it was like, and they're making out. Yeah. Yeah. No conversation. Yeah, it was like a like lap on the hot tub. Oh, yeah. 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 I was. This yeah. was pointed out by Derek. Catherine is now Cat. So he sent home Cat and then gave. He's reusing and, her name. And then reusing her nickname. Oof. Hmm. Justice for Cat. You really were she not was, memorable. She was fantastic television. She was. She was. She was really she great expression. Really, I mean, not only is Zach boring, he really is eliminating all the interesting people. He mm. preserves his energy. Like I think he's like feels good enough about his top however many connections that he's like, I why would I put in any effort trying to salvage a connection that's going like taking a nosedive when I feel great about the ones at the top? Like we I see got, that with yeah, Rihanna, sure, we but, see that with mm-hmm. uh Bailey. I, yeah, yeah no, he was not fighting for anything any of them to really stay it no, was like no, cool, no sounds no, good no, bye no. listen wait, I, I get that I'm more surprised that the like I mean the show really is going along with this because like mm-hmm. Christina yeah I mean yeah. I, I, help, me, help, I, me, I, help I, me help me help me I could not have been more wrong about her I mean between her having a kid and uh-huh. her obviously big personality like uh, she definitely has bachelorette material yeah no like so tripping. I Okay, so I like, like I'm gonna miss her, and I feel like I want her back. Yeah. But here's the thing: like, she kind of had a villain edit, but then also there was also kind of this redemption arc, and there's something about her that I'm like, you're a villain, but I don't hate you. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, at all, that, because no one's a really a villain in this world. She's just like she she has all the makings of a bachelor villain, which yeah. is sarcastic and a big personality, mm-hmm. and that's all you really need. Like, and and yeah. you're not like. You don't walk into that room just kind of worried about everyone and just not and like, like not focused on not tipping, t- stepping on anyone's toes mm-hmm. and just trying to be everyone's best friend. And and that's what most people do. Yeah. And Christina obviously is not one of those people. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So like, but I'm just, you know, she obviously said, you know, when it was delusional on her part when mm-hmm. when she didn't get the group date rose and she was just like i'll be honest i'm a little disappointed <laughs> like yeah i was like whoa that was amazing yeah <laughs> like no that was when she said know. that i was like wait wait, wait hold on i mean she definitely <laughs> is spoiled right like she's self-centered and spoiled like can can we Fair to say can we make that that connection because it's like i loved it I love that she isn't necessarily worried about other, you know, like it's, is it the normal thing to do if you're in a world to pursue a relationship and, and you have a limited amount of time and we're always to to like, to be happy for other people. I get that logic. I understand being disappointed, but the way in which she went about it, the fact that she truly like, you know, that's the difference between like, uh, being a child and i guess being an adult is like we all have feelings and then what we do with those feelings are two different things and she you know because sometimes they'll edit you what what, usually what they do and then and i've had this happen to me right i had this happen to me in andy season in that situation where someone gets the group date rose and someone else is bombed and usually that person who's already had validation usually the way that's edited is they, they, they capture you kind of pouting because you're all on the couch. In reality, you all have cameras on you. So every facial expression- Every zone out. Every zone out, every body movement is captured on camera for them to use uh, whenever they want. And so what they usually would do is this like focus on you pouting or making a weird face, whether that was the natural reaction or maybe something you did earlier in the night, who knows. And then they would interview you like in an ITM and get you to talk about like, Hey, so that must've been a a bummer. And you'd be like, yeah, I was like bummed. And then they would like put that together Mm -hmm. and play some villainous music. And all of a sudden you're an inconsiderate, spoiled, selfish person who can only be happy for yourself. Mm -hmm. And in reality, you're just a human being who was a little bummed and then was honest when asked how you felt about it. 
And they only took the first part and, of that sentence yeah. where you said you were upset, not the second part where you said, but I understand. But that, Christina right. was like sitting there and being like, no, nah, this is fucked up. Yeah. I should have got that rose. It was one of those moments that you're like, <laughs> uh, that's what you think in your head, but you don't say out yeah, loud. And she yeah. just said it. Yeah. She, and she was like, what? Uh, and then like, she was like, wait, what do you mean? Like, of course, this is how I feel. And it's like, yeah. I don't want to like, right. yeah, we're like on reality TV. I thought it was, it was funny. I, I thought it was hysterical. <laughs> but also, if that's how she really felt, and and if that's how she really thought that was the best way to handle it, mm-hmm. then yeah, I think she's been, she has been the, the the center of attention mm-hmm. I think for most of her life. So I thought the moment was funny, and then I thought how after she didn't understand the problem, that's where I was like, huh, like you like, really don't ooh, see how this could yeah. be problematic and. Yeah hurt someone's feelings and yeah right yeah exactly also can we talk about during the rose ceremony her facial expressions were wild like that was a journey when she wasn't being called (sighs) yeah what was going on there she's making christina's eye contact is very she's actually put it on tiktok she made like a mashup of Mm. her staring at taylor swift at the end of the 15 music video Mm. and her staring at zach at a rose ceremony and they're very similar looks (laughs) Cat's she, gone. Christina's carrying the torch. Yep. You need some facial reactions. <laughs> yeah. And then Brianna. I mean, R.I.P. Oh, yeah. America's sweetheart. She was never meant for Zach, that's for sure. No. She's, I mean, th- let's just say they're just not in the same league. I don't know whose league is better, <laughs> but they're just not in the just same. Just different leagues. She, I, I find Brianna to be a fascinating person and of, yeah. Why? How so? I mean, she's beautiful and... Mm-hmm just you could there's just there's a lot there mm-hmm. i'm very interested yeah i just i kind of i think... do think she's a fake crier uh-huh. um and i think she was playing the game mm-hmm. and i think to zach's credit that's what he picked up on i think when zach was talking about something feels off with you mm-hmm. i think zach was like you don't like me and mm-hmm. I don't really believe. Right. And you're trying to goat me into saying, no, tell me the name yeah. of the girl who was mean to you. Yeah. Like, I think it was stuff yeah. like that. And I think Brianna, yeah. like, I don't necessarily fault her. Like, if she showed up on a TV show. She <laughs> probably thinks this is all bullshit. I don't even like this guy, mm-hmm. but I'll, I'll play the game. Whatever. Totally. And she probably thought, yeah, you're handsome, you're nice, whatever. You're just yeah. not my guy. And I think Zach intuitively picked up on it. Yeah. And, I, and, and sent her home. But yeah. it just seems like such a shame to have that level of person to come mm-hmm. on the show right. and it's episode three and and we couldn't find that that part makes me mad about zach being the bachelor mm-hmm. you know because you're like you're taking this a little too literally like we know you guys don't like each other but just keep not her around even, no like not her. even little literally i guess what i mean is i would want a bachelor who could keep up with someone like brianna and 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 capture her attention and have her interest and mm-hmm. actually get her to want to be genuine and open up and and not and again I could be totally wrong but my analysis of the situation is she did, he wasn't into him and he could sense that and but he mm-hmm. has like 30 women on the first night it's up to him to be like please open up open up no, like I feel like they have to kind of meet him but there. Like, Brianna is the type of person that for some guys or a lot of guys would just be like holy shit like blown away and mm-hmm. then like I mean, again, t- credit to Zach for being emotionally mature to like not. I like, guess, you might be the hottest woman in the world. Not chase the shiny, <laughs> pretty, captivating thing as we all, many of us do. Again, cr- speaks to Zach's emo- what seems like his emotional maturity. I'm just like mad that we can't have a bachelor who, because I who could want her to open up and really get to know someone. Then as seeming, she seems dynamic, Brianna. I think you hit it on the head, though, which is she never liked him. And she knows she doesn't like him, which I kind of love that she wasn't even pretending to be like, pick me, pick me. She was just like, well, what else am I going to talk about? Okay, there's some shit going on in the house. So I'm going to open up that can of worms. (laughs) Yeah. So I just it's like, uh. yeah, it was like someone like falling off a cliff and like grabbing Christina's ankle to like yank her down with her when she was like, Christina made me cry multiple times. Like she was like, I'm I'm not asking you whether or not I should name names. I am going for it at this point. Yeah. Yeah. She never liked him. That's that. I think that's the best point that you've made about this. And now that I think about it, she's like. I'm too good for you. This isn't going to be a thing. So let's too just good or let's whatever. Not, it's just you like know. you're not. We're not. It and yeah. And I just I don't I don't want Zach to only be in love, lo- falling in love with. I guess it's it's just like oh, no guy's ever treated me 
nice ever and i'm just looking for the bare minimum and then there's zach being like you deserve I'm more I'm the, you deserve, i can do i can do that mm-hmm. you know like i can definitely do more than the bare minimum and i believe that he can and i believe mm-hmm. zach has every intention of wanting to not only be do the bare minimum but being a genuinely loving and caring for partner mm-hmm. i just wish that he w- i wish our bachelor would have the ability to to uh, captivate the attention of of more what seem like fascinating people Mm -hmm. Hmm. can i ask you about the katie date i really want to get your take on this yeah shoot was i the only one who was very surprised that there was like an overnight set up for them out of like that doesn't happen they're really fucking with the people this season right in to the note of the they're doing it in the love story way yeah they're doing like we're like you're gonna meet the whole family and then go back to the house and tell the girls about it you're gonna christina meeting the family oh yeah (laughs) yeah boy that was like they're really like they're I think they're trying to they're doing this like very kind of like sneaky like getting in people's heads in a way that is still like serves the purpose of the show and still like builds the connection. But I yes, but I like they don't am I wrong? Like they don't do overnights ever before. Like that's no, unprecedented. They... Like has that ever happened before fantasy the Bachelor suites? world? I mean, you had Caitlin right. and I had our little charade which wasn't even an overnight, but it was mm-hmm. certainly alone time. Right. Uh, but an actual what is called overnight, I don't know. Right? Because I, I feel like sometimes they do it, but it's not staged. Like, like, or it is staged. Or right. it's not really an overnight. Like this was set. I shouldn't use the word staged because that makes it seem fabricated. What I mean is like this was set up that the date is that I, you planned. have bed set up. It planned. Thank I don't you. believe that they actually spent the night in that tent. You don't? No. I also loved how the beds were like apart. Yeah. <laughs> like that, twin that, air mattresses. Yeah. I don't believe that they actually spent the, they didn't spend the night in that tent. And if they spent the night together, they left the tent and, and maybe went to a hotel room. That's possible. Mm. Well, they but said like, they didn't sleep at all. When she got back, she was like, mm-hmm. I didn't sleep. It's like I'm running on fumes. any amount. Yeah, I don't doubt yeah. that either. And I could be wrong. I just like, that was that's the an actual mu- museum, and I don't doubt that they were able to rent it out and film there. But like, I don't think they slept there all night. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, they wouldn't. Where have did left. she go? Like, when you do a fantasy suite, right? Like, you have the crew film everything, and and then you have the date, and that's filmed, and you sit down, and you do all the bullshit, and there's the fake food there, or drinks or whatever, and then literally like you wrap, and so like it takes a good fifteen twenty minutes for like them to like pull whatever, need to pull some lighting, whatever, and the producers will give you your like, final, like, all right, well, here's a, again, this was back in the day, here's a phone. If you need anything, call us. You know, you know, there's always like a, there's like each one has a handler like up all night just in case something, you know, gets weird or uncomfortable or someone, you know, just, you know, they have people standing by. And you know what I'm saying? So they didn't just like leave the museum with these two there. And they didn't just like leave them in, a mu- they just didn't leave them in a museum. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. Logistically, if they spent the night there, did the producers spend the night with them? No. If you zoomed out, there's a second tent. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, but you know, they weren't left alone. I can tell you that much. Mm-hmm. Ben uh, Stiller was there, the guard. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just, I, they're logistically, it, didn't, it definitely did not go down exactly how it was aired. That's for sure. On a typical fantasy suite date, you go on the dinner portion. It's fake dinner. You're then released for the night. Can you like order room service? When do you eat? Great question. Yeah. Before and maybe after. Are you hungry? You definitely always eat before dates. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And then like for a fantasy suite, they definitely, I mean, you have limited time. So food usually is not top of the priority. I would never make it in this show. Uh, <laughs> I'd be like chicken tenders yeah. now. <laughs> oh, but yeah, you could. Yeah, for sure. That's you can. They, you can eat for okay. sure. Just checking. Yeah. It seems like Katie, based on the one on one, it seems like she's a real contender. Like I, I was yeah. getting minimum yes. hometowns. I, I agree. Oh yeah. I, oh yeah. I mean, like, what do I? I've at this point, I feel like all my predictions have been atrocious. But uh, I think she's a definitely a new front runner. Also, mm-hmm. like, I was caught off by her beauty, in a sense. Like, I I did not notice her the first two weeks, hmm. but she's pretty. She's very, very pretty. Very pretty. Mm-hmm. Very, she has a, a very, yeah, just a very pretty look. Yeah. Also going. And I, I, I bet that she's prettier in person. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Whether or not they slept over at the museum, it was pretty savage to have her walk in in pajamas. pajamas. Oh, yeah. I'm like, really? But would it have been worse like, really? to do her but other really? clothes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah I, that's a good question. Is pajamas or the clothing she was wearing the day the before worse? worse? Oh. Outfit. There's no good option. Right. Because at least now they know she's, she had something to sleep but the, in. But pajamas suggest that they, they shared a moment. Yes. Yeah. And her yeah. showing up in the same clothes doesn't? In a different way. Different way. Mm. And they are very much, again, I think they, they are going out of their way. To, they're the balancing act of still fucking with mm-hmm. the women versus like two separate beds, mm-hmm. like long, the old fashioned pajamas. There was nothing, they, there was literally nothing sexy about those yeah, pajamas. No. Um, Horrifying, actually. Yeah. <laughs> the opposite. Like, running around the museum in matching silk pajamas, like the least sexy like, thing you mm-hmm. could ever Should do. Should we just run? Right. Let's just run around <laughs> the dinosaur. Like, yeah. Like, truly, like nightmare. six-year-old energy. Yeah. Like, no oh, shade, yeah. but like, that like was in your the matching Prince pajamas. Charming. That was the, that yeah. was the, the mm-hmm. Prince the cartoon, cartoon Network. Yes. Zach, yeah. yeah. That was not swag, Zach. That was not swag, Zach. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think they told her anything? Because I'm like, if I were on that date and I didn't pack like a skincare routine or anything, you're going to make me go to bed without taking my makeup oh, yeah. off? Yeah, that would have almost, if she, again, wherever she spent the night, they thought of that stuff. I would have been pissed. I'm like, where is my moisturizer? Know what you need? Yeah. <laughs> they always know what you need. They probably They're going to have my prescriptions. Yeah. They, oh. they always like. <laughs> so many logistical Before the questions. day, they, yeah, it's like. Here's like here's a here your here's what you should wear like you know what do you have to fit the accommodate this type of weather or this type of activity yada 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 hmm. you might need an extra change of clothes you know whatever yeah it's like they always you always get the you're you're prepared they're okay. making sure you're prepared okay even if you being prepared is you being un, un unprepared mm-hmm. but they're preparing you to be unprepared. You know so what I'm saying? Maybe she even had an inclination that there would be some sort of overnight. Because they might have to be like, pack your moisturizer. Pack those probiotics. And they also, <laughs> she left in the evening for this date. Yeah. So I'm sure there's right. a part of her hoping, like, I didn't just get shorted with like an only evening portion of a one-on-one. Hopefully there's some other additional something. We'll have to right. We'll have to ask her. Yeah, those matching know. pajamas. But yeah, atrocious. Uh, they have yeah. to keep thinking of new way. I mean, whatever. They're it's something new. You know, I liked it. Mm-hmm. Whatever. You know, it fucks with the the women a little bit. Great. You know, what it? Gabby seems like she's getting a lot of airtime, and but like, is she, who's so who's going to be the new villain? We don't have Brianna. Not that she was ever a villain. We don't have Christina. We lost Bailey. We l- Brooklyn is tell. Brooklyn stood up to Christina, and she was the one who said, "Have you ever considered literally shutting, shutting the, the fuck, fuck up?" up. I really mm-hmm. like. But I kind of yeah, liked it good. because I felt like she was just. It was less villainous and more just calling it like it was. Well, yeah, it's villainous. She, but so, who, who is the girl who's going? Who's the woman who's going to piss off the house? That's always the question when you ask yourself, "Who is your next villain?" Anastasia. It's who's going to piss off the house? Hmm. Anastasia, because they were yeah. all mad at her for milking her injury, anyways. At the football maybe. game. Yeah, maybe. But she's but also that's... 30, and I feel like <laughs> And no she's... one's going to worry about a 30-year-old woman. <laughs> Let me finish my sentence. She's Washed also 30, <laughs> and I think she has, like, uh, I think she's, like, leader vibes. Like, I think she is someone who is, like, clearly emotional, mature. Like, the way Zach always describes her is, like, she's a badass. Like, I think she is someone who's just, like, very together and, like, beyond kind of, like, the pettiness that you, like... Yeah, I don't think Anastasia... Mm-hmm. I, I, I think the football, it's like, yeah, sure... They made a note out of it. I don't know, but I don't think it's a big deal. I could, I could p- see Greer. Who yeah. else? Gabby just. Peter I will Pan. tell you when- that was yeah, unfortunate that- for yeah. Gabby. <laughs> and I like they're they're mic'd up and they go, "Don't worry, we won't tell anyone." Well, they yeah. didn't. The Bachelor did exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's I w- horrifying. Do we agree with that? Like, do we like do we think they should have aired that? So like, I thought it was funny, but I guess it depends on the person. I mean, yeah, I thought it was funny too. But I'm like. Just, like I guess what I'm saying is if it were me, I would be like, that's funny. But okay. I could also see someone being horrified and being embarrassed. I I would make my be. friends throw me an, a yearly party where it was like the t- the anniversary of me pissing myself on The Bachelor <laughs> if that happened to me on. But like she got tackled and like what, a little pee came out? Right. That's why I'm like, <laughs> like what's the big deal? Do- Jeff does that. Je- we, you know, Jeff's if, we, if, if we play a little rough, Jeff might like leak a little bit. He also, when he's excited. Yeah. Jeff existing. Just- Jeff be pissing. Yeah. One thing about your dog. 
maybe she had to pee before this football game. Then she gets that's horrifying. And like, how are you supposed to hold that in? That's a nightmare. You, yeah, you can't. I pee like twenty times a day because yeah. I drink so much water. So I, I feel right for now. her. I feel for her. But I'm gonna switch off the pee subject because you mentioned Greer quickly. And when I interviewed Jesse Palmer before the season started, I asked him, I always ask this question. I say, who should we keep an eye on? And I asked that because no one really knows how to answer it because I'm not saying like who's a front runner, who's a villain, whatever. And he said he was like Greer. He's like, definitely keep an eye on Greer. She's very interesting. And I haven't really seen much happen with her yet. So I feel like there's something coming. She came out of the gates. She got the first impression, Rose. Mm -hmm. And for a first impression, Rose, she's really disappeared. Correct. So there's something that's going to happen. Well, because I wonder if she's going to get the one on one next week because they gave us when it was the group date reading the card and it was like, who's it going to be? Hers was the last name on it of like and they had this whole like talking head of her being like, I could really use a one on one time with Zach. Mm. So I wonder if they're priming us for next week. She's going to be our one on one. I feel like this is typical, though. Like you don't jump from getting the first impression rose to getting an immediate one on one. If you're Abigail, you you never get one. uh, But she really has disappeared. Yeah, it's not so much it's she's just disappeared. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you can get a first impression rose and and get a lot of airtime even yeah. if you're not even if you're not getting dates. Mm-hmm. I mean, even on the group like just we're not seeing any conversations between her and Zach. I mean, it's you know, and I guess I mean, maybe this is a sign of it's not as boring of a season as as we worry because the producers uh, were okay with Christina going home. Right. That was shocking to me. And like, I was there are so many home. women left that even if Zach was like, I hate her, mm-hmm. they could have been like, fine. But like, just give it a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Like, what else? For Christina to go home solely based off of Zach being like, this ain't my girl. And really, you know, he like, he has to be more interested in all the other women. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because what what usually happens is Zach has his four or five or six or even seven favorites. Mm-hmm. Let's say eight favorites. How many women are still left? Uh, fourteen. Right. So what I'm saying is, it's like like there's some of these women on here, like the producers are like whatever about, and Zach's whatever about. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And they're still here. Right. And say what you want about Christina is that. We knew who she, she was. She was the best television She's good TV. that we had, mm-hmm. and she was getting all the airtime, mm-hmm. and it was funny and compelling, and or you hated her, which mm-hmm. is also great, mm-hmm. you know? And and it's week three, and they were like, you know what? We don't need her. Right. Hmm. I also wonder, is she bachelorette contender, and they maybe thought she could get too villainous, and they're like, we don't want to deal with this. Although I think it's too early they, to tell. Like in I, filming, they're not. But yeah, they, I, don't that, CTA? I, don't, I don't think they're filming that early. And yeah. to that point, I think they are, the producers are very good at what they do. Yeah, but and if they really wanted her, they you can. It's easy to protect someone in the house. Mm-hmm. It's easy to protect them in the edit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. It's, it's, yeah. We like, did get a yeah. CTA though that said, "Are you a single dad looking for a partner to go through life with?" Yeah, that was a very specific. Oh, yeah. CTA. So Andy had her enemies in the house when, you know, when you never saw that before she was a bachelorette. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's so right. Like they could have just had a really great redemption arc for her or yeah. a heartbreak. I, or just, I just said there's just no way they're like, you know what, we want you to be the next bachelorette. You need right. to go home now before you can't help yourself. Right. But, I also think there's a lot of girls on this season that we don't know enough about them yet, but seem to be bachelorette material. Uh yeah, I like mean, quite a few. Yeah, like yeah. Catherine, Katie, yeah. I still think Charity. Charity. Catherine I really like Charity. Ca- crazy. Yeah. I still think Catherine has some crazy in her. You know who I love is Genevieve. <laughs> also, I feel like I would totally watch Genevieve as Bachelorette. Mm-hmm. Why? She just has like I think she has really good energy, and it seems like she's someone who is incredibly fun, like Ariel, but fun in a way that feels really like grounded and like I just feel like she would just be like a great bud to go through life with I like Jess I just feel Jess. like she might be a little young how old is she 23 Hannah Brown was 23 I guess yeah, yeah. I don't see her as bachelor. oh I do you do yeah huh she has like a real unassuming like thing about her 
she's she's got this very unique you know she has a britney murphy kind of vibe to her really yeah where at first mm. that you would like you don't and you know when they, i think when britney murphy came on the scene you didn't think of like it was it was alicia silverstern so mm-hmm. so she was like but then, like, she kind of came into her own, Brittany Murphy, mm-hmm. right? And, like, I feel like this Jess is kind of <laughs> unassuming, like, who's this kind of, like, quiet, mm-hmm. cute girl? But, yeah, no, I think she... She might pop. I think she... I could see it. I don't mm. know. There, she, I think she has... Uh, I think she has something. I, I could do. also see her winning. And she was first out of the limos. Yeah, she was first out True. of the limo. I like their see, conversation. See, I see that more. Like her just being so honest of like, I'm an overthinker and I wear my heart on my sleeve. Like it feels like they're having more yeah, and she's, I, reflective yeah. conversations. I, I think I think Jess is going to be around. I think she's got a, a very interesting side. Like Davia or is it Davia? She's going. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's gone. just like striking Stunning. and beautiful. She's just there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and with Ariel, it's like, okay, we know he's has a hot spur and he likes making out with her. Mm hmm. I mean, I'm curious. Yeah, where? How yeah, it's like, how does the one on one go with Ariel? Because I feel like she'll make it far enough to get a one on one, right? And I mean, is it going to be like, oh, she? There's some some trauma to unpack, and suddenly she's not just the fun one; she's also this really like substantive emotional connection. Maybe, or is yeah. it like, yeah. we had so much fun, but there's I nothing else. Well, that's how it was for me and and Danielle L. Yeah, I was super in her, very attractive woman. I thought she. Like from afar, I was attracted to her. Uh, and then we had a one-on-one. Game over. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was done. What did we think of uh, Allie's one-on-one? I thought it was a really great date. For some reason, I'm not believing it. Like, Their I connection. know they both say that they're very into each other. And I really like her. Like, I think she seems very genuine. Yeah, she genuine seems impressive. And, and, and I like her lady, a lot. Kinda. She even talked about being in charge Mm -hmm. yeah she said i'm very type a like i fool people Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah when he was like i fool people and he was like me yeah (laughs) yeah i like her more than i like them together if that makes sense. totally well so she's like basically doing the bachelor's narration for them she said falling out of the sky was scary but falling in love with him will be worth it like i was like oh my god like this is a hallmark film yeah yeah that remind me of other things if it were guaranteed it would not be real and real is what I'm after. And that's what's one of those things that people mm-hmm. say. That, and, then, and then everyone's like, yeah, totally. But it really makes no sense it, what at all. It, what yeah. does that mean? If it was guaranteed, it wouldn't be real. Well, yeah. I, I would actually uh, argue the opposite. In fact, if you could guarantee me something. Maybe it is real. Maybe, like, maybe you can guarantee because it it's in fact real. If it's like, <laughs> well, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how it's going to turn out. Mm-hmm. So like maybe. Wait, that, who said that? It was Christina when he was, when Zach was confronting Christina mm. and she was crying. Yeah, it was Christina. And, and they were talking, they were coming down. It's like, yeah, because didn't she, she made some comment would not during be real. their one on one? It wouldn't be real and real is what we're after. She made some comment of, similar to that on their one on one about it being like real or being genuine, I think. So that fits in with her. But it doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. But what did you think like, of her meltdown? Her help me, help me, help me, help me. I think she was genuinely panicked. Yeah, I think she, I actually believe that. I believe that she is a big, loose personality and maybe it's because of her, maybe she's a little spoiled and, you know, but I, I don't believe, I believe that she really realized that she, this is falling apart mm-hmm. faster than she realized. And I thought, I think she was getting a little cocky mm-hmm. and <clears throat> maybe had some false confidence about her state with Zach or in the house. And I think everything turned on her real fast. So I, 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 that seemed genuine, mm-hmm. her panic attack, or what, not panic, but like her reaction to. Yeah. That seemed. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot, but I think that's how she is. I think yeah. she's dramatic. I think she's a lot. Yeah. I mean, she was crying on the staircase, <laughs> like, sobbing. Yeah. Sobbing and, and on like, the staircase. Well, and while, even though I'm a big fan of Brianna, like, I was like, you're faking this. Like, you don't care. Right. You know, oh, no. these are fake tears. Yeah. Like, these this are like been, ego tears, yeah, not like just, connection tears. You know, when she left, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm sad that Zach can't hold your attention. But mm-hmm. like, this is every moment Brianna stayed on the show was a moment that just like brought her down. Mm-hmm. You know, it just, she need she needed. Send to, her to paradise and have everyone fight over her. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Truly. Mm-hmm. I did say for, on the top, just closing the topic of Christina on the Bachelor Bowl, there was a line where they were like, she's 5'5 five, five and has bad intentions. And there was something about that that was so funny to me about being like 5'5. <laughs> five, five. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. that's the at most average height you right. could possibly have. Right. Mm-hmm. I, totally. But she's yeah. five five and it's not bad like she's attention. five feet I, and small they, but mighty. They, yeah. really, <laughs> they really went for it. They really uh, tackled each other. I know. You know. They, oh, yeah, I was watching that and I was like, if I were a contestant, I would have sat that one out. Like, I'm always kind of impressed when they do like boxing or football and the women do it. it. I'd be like, no, I'm not doing this at all. Jumping out of a plane. And then I'd like, be like was absolutely it, who not. Was it was it was it Gen- <laughs> Genevieve? She had a sling. I mean, they, they, oh, they yeah. just kind yeah, of oh my god, yes. it was like, kind of painted over that. Yeah. They give us the biggest fake out in the world. First play of the game, no injury whatsoever. Just a girl taking a long time to get up, and then we don't see like the sling situation. Genevieve's like rubs some that? dirt in it. Yeah. She Genevieve's just fine. had a rose ceremony, which is just like a fucking <laughs> yeah. gown and a sling. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's another reason I like her, her so home. much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like we never got any explanation about that yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Christina's eliminated. Did anyone else think that when she was leaving the house, when Zach walked Christina out and we kind of got that like overhead angle that she was maybe like kind of leaning in for a kiss? I got some body language Mm -hmm. like when they were coming out of the hug where like she kind of was like and then he clearly was not into it. So she left. But I rewatched it and it was like maybe that's just her instinct because they have kissed before. So that's Mm -hmm. like maybe she just out of habit went in for the kiss. But I was like, oh, no, no. That's gone. She says, can I kiss I, you? Yeah. Like, no, girl, get <laughs> no. in the car. <laughs> I have to rewatch that. He did that again. On the, who was it with? He was like, I'd like to kiss you now. Oh, is it yeah. Ali or? I think it was Ariel. It was like, ha, ha, yeah, ha I I'd like so to kiss too. you now. You know, like, like, we got our laughs out of the way. I don't know. I mean, I'm off. Like, it just the every time. They just read a room, Zach. Yeah. Just, you now have rapport with these women. You don't have to every time yeah. be like, can I kiss you now? Like. He is one of the most respectful men I have ever seen on reality TV. Yeah, it's that, wonderful. It's out of yeah. control. But like, also but, pay attention to like body language and chemistry. Yeah. And but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I keep saying to people, I'm like, he's kind of everything that you might want in terms of politeness and doing things correctly. But that doesn't mean that he's a reality star. Yeah. And also to Nick's point, maybe it's not everything you want because as a woman, you don't want to have to be like, okay, kiss me now. Like, just like do it. If yeah. you can't pick up on the body language, then. But I, I agree with you. I think he's doing it to be respectful, not because but he doesn't I, get it. I do yeah. think is a, is a show that com uh, that that essentially the show is a show about dating and relationships that intersects with pop culture and how we kind of discuss that. I find it interesting that our current bachelor is kind of everything that. Uh, the women of modern dating have been kind of asking for Mm -hmm. and the type of uh, bare minimum or etiquette or just how someone, you know, treats people or treats women like communication communicates and Mm -hmm. respect and just earnest and just this. Here's your guy. Right. And I'm just, you know, uh, I think it's kind of an interesting thing to discuss and break down because I think in, in reality, life is it's it's far more nuanced. You know, you I find I, I consider myself someone who I think prides himself in his character and has high character and wants to do the right thing and can it has and can be earnest. And you know, I have my freak flag and and I and, and I have all the things that was portrayed to be like the polarizing guy, or whatever. You know, like I I have that side. You know, and I think life is about kind of finding that balance and. And I think people like people who have are multidimensional who and we all hope that, you know, we can have the 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 lady or the guy in the streets and the freak in the sheets type of uh, of energy. But I just think it's, it's it's interesting that Zach is very much what a lot of people have been asking for in a way. Right. And maybe not what they actually want. want. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm really fallen for Zach as Bachelor, though. He This episode, when he was picking up uh, Katie for their one-on-one, as he's, like, walking by the girls, he went, did I hear sniffing? Who was sniffing? <laughs> and for some reason, that just, like, really got me. Or I thought it was very funny and endearing, and I'll have these little, like, moments where he'll be, like, kind of theatrical in his looks and, like, I think the best he can do is endearing. Yeah. What do we think Zach's relationship with his chest hair is? 
Mm. Because mm. he keeps it very trim. Very. We, but it's saw not. That. It's not it's, wild. It's but it's like there's clearly a lot of it. But he he keeps it very trim. Yeah. And then he even made a comment made for a the comment. pool party. Yeah. Of, here comes the chest hair, like as he was taking his shirt off. I think he's self-conscious yeah. about Do it. Do we think that's same. self-conscious or is that just kind of like a ha-ha? No, I think he's clearly a very hairy guy and it's very <laughs> well groomed. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. He's and Do guys it, get their I, chest I it, lasered? I think if he let it yeah. go, really? he, yeah. I think if he let it go, it would be a thing. A bush. Mm. Unruly. It would just- a It would be a lot. It would it be- would, It would be- yeah. A chush. It would a be chush. something. What, is it? what it would are you saying? Something. A, ch- oh, some, a chush. And, and, and some people love it. Some people don't love it. But I think he's self-conscious about it. Because he you mentioned guys it. chest hair people? Well, uh, this is, my chest is yeah. fully grown. And by mm-hmm. fully grown, I mean like I truly haven't trimmed it or plucked it or done anything to it in 10 years. And if I took my shirt off now, you wouldn't be able to see any hair <laughs> from, from five feet across oh. the room. Hmm. You, you know, if you got, so like, I don't. I used I used to shave it because it was like oh I got twenty hairs on my chest, and then I was like that's stupid, and then mm. I stopped doing that. So I actually like I hate when men shave it. Like I just think it looks gross. Um, but that said, I guess if you're that hairy, then like yes, you need to keep it trim. Mm-hmm. Like you got to keep it trim. If yeah. you, you know if you notice that it's too hairy, that's a problem. But I really hate when you could tell that a guy shaves their chest. Mm. I'm like, the just prickle, trim it. The prickles. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's like one of those things mm. where it's like, if I'm noticing it or thinking about it, that's a bad sign. Like, there's definitely been guys without chest hair, with chest hair that I found attractive. But the second I'm like thinking about the chest hair, then like that, I think he like some three guards it. It's like that with know? like hair extensions too, where I'm like, if I'm wondering if you have hair extensions, they're not good extensions. Mm. And be, just like be confident with it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, if you have chest hair, you have chest hair, rock it. Like, but you could tell with him for sure. It was either... A self-conscious thing or he's just aware that he is hairy but since it's trim it doesn't look too hairy totally i wonder if rachel said good. something to him i think it looks great but like he oh you think rachel fucked him up you can blame it all on rachel <laughs> no, no I, I was just i was like i wonder I he, if he I'm has sure, some <laughs> no, i'm sure like i'm sure it's something he dealt with in high school or middle school and people were fucking mean or whatever yeah. or some girl he dated said some shit and there's a million ways ways we get self-conscious about our bodies including mm-hmm. men yeah so no and i think he yeah and so he's the bachelor taking his shirt off around uh, uh, like around a group of women, and that that inner child and in Zach came out about, and, and and that was basically saying, "Please don't judge me." Right. In that moment, it was kind of it was it was endearing, but yeah, mm-hmm. I think he three guards it. He just kind of he's definitely very aware of it. So I tend to agree with you that somebody probably said something to him at some point in his life, but yeah. like and, you're and a man, so- you're supposed to have chest hair. Yeah. Right. Own it, King. What about back hair? That's a no. That's a hard pass. In in my in my opinion. Yeah, I can't think of a time where I've noticed someone's back yeah. hair. I, so I feel like if I did notice it, I don't know how yeah. I'd react. Maybe yeah. negatively. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I've like I've never hair? encountered that. No, I but... like I like hairless. Oh, you like hairless? Yeah. I'm okay. like if I can wax and laser my mm-hmm. down under, you can figure something out. Like. That's how I feel. You want, okay. <laughs> so you want them plucked? Yeah. Mm. We could go do laser together. Okay. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful bonding moment. Everyone First date. Ha- everyone has <laughs> their yeah. taste. I mean, uh, look, I'm Jewish, so I guess I, I mean, now I'm engaged, but I guess I always was dating Jews who tend to be a bit more hairy. That might be a are stereotype. Are Jewish men but more hairy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a thing. Okay. I, I can say that. That's a, it might be a blanket statement, not everyone, but- Jewish men usually don't have like a hairless chest. That's a great point. Yeah, it's not a thing. So yeah. maybe it's just what I'm. I'm eight percent Jewish. Used to. Oh, okay. that's where those twenty hairs that's come awesome. from. Yeah. That's where those twenty hairs that's come exactly. from. Exactly. Yeah. That's the Jew in you, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Represent. Uh, all right. Well, Elizabeth, thank you so much as always for coming. Always fun to chat with you. Uh, where can my audience once again uh, consume your content, follow you, all the great stuff that you're doing? So, Remind them. Variety.com and Variety Magazine. And my social handles are at eWagmeister. And thank you for having me. It's always, always so much always fun to hang. Uh, ho- please come back, obviously, next season. I'd love to. I hope you do. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at com. Subscribe, rate, review. Go back and check out our episode. 
on Ask Nick on Monday. And don't forget going deeper on Thursday this week. And then next week, Raven from Love is Blind talks about all the SK drama, all the infidelity, all the cheating, all the rumors are addressed and answered. It's a wild story. Our jaws were dropped. Yours will too. Don't miss it. That is next Thursday. Also, don't forget on Thursday, Thursday, better date than never. A new episode, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. You do not want to miss it. Tell your friends if uh, you have been struggling at all with dating and relationships or you just like hearing people's stories, you better make sure you tune in because you'll miss out if you don't. Until then, bye. Bye.